Hey YouTube, this is Joey, and I'm back. Um, it's not Vlogtober anymore, I know, I know. And I didn't finish Vlogtober. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but I started working a lot of overtime. And... I'm just too tired. Too tired. Uh, I was working over 60 hours a week for several weeks in a row. And um, it just got to me. That's that's not the life that I really enjoy doing. And so, um, anyway, so what's done is done. Vlogtober is over. So I actually thought about in early November going back and making a vlog for each day that I missed at the end of Vlogtober. Uh, but I didn't do it. And rightfully so, because it wouldn't have been... Um, True to the spirit of Vlogtober, I guess. Not that the, I mean, I, I could I could really add vlog to the end or beginning of you know the first syllable of uh, vlog December. I could do you know vlog December instead of December. Uh, vlog January. <laughs> Vloguary, maybe I don't know. Uh, it doesn't work quite as well <laughs> with some of the months. March would be a difficult one. May. But, um... Anyway. Um, Vlogtober's over. And it's done with. So, and I didn't finish it. And for that, I'm sorry. Next topic. Uh, let me see. I'm going to talk about running. Uh, so, the plan for next year. And actually, I'll be doing 13 consecutive months, hopefully, of running half marathons. Uh, so I'll be doing one in December. I, I did one in October. I'm not, I'm not going to do one in November. Uh, but I'll be doing one in early December. And then I've got to find one for January. And then February I'll be doing... I'm, I've got one that I want to sign up for. And then March and April I have ones that I'm already signed up for. And then... May, June, July, and August, I'm not sure about yet. I'm going to have to investigate, find out what's going on, where, where people are running at. And then uh, September through December of next year, uh, I've got some good uh, good options there. So uh, the ones I'm definitely going to do and either have... Uh, the ones I'm definitely doing are... Um, Cedars of Lebanon, there's like a frostbite half marathon at Cedars of Lebanon in February here in Tennessee. Cedars of Lebanon State Park. Uh, there's the Tom King half marathon in March in Nashville. Uh, that's a great half marathon, especially for if, if, if you're going to run a half marathon and you live within a couple hundred miles of Nashville and you're looking for a really easy, good, flat a uh, course that's not crowded. Uh, that's that's a great place to run a half marathon. So, um, gonna do that one in March. Then in April, I'm gonna do the country music half marathon, and and the March and April ones I'm already signed up for. So, yeah, April is the country music, rock and roll, country music half. It's gonna be crowded, nasty, and all that stuff, but. It's local. It's here. I've already signed up for it. It was on discount when I signed up for it. So um, those three for sure. I don't have one for January yet. So if you got any suggestions, let me know. I prefer it to be within a day trip distance of Nashville. Uh, I prefer it to be on a Saturday uh, so it does not conflict with my work schedule. And I also found out I'm going to have jury duty in January. So it's going to have to be day trip for sure because I'm not sure how I'm gonna you know work all that so um, anyway so that's kind of my running plans I want to st I want to st the reason I'm doing a half marathon every month is I want to maintain a fitness level um, and I'll, I I always work better if I have a goal so um, in the past I've signed up for a half marathon and then worked toward it and got to it and then I don't have anything on the plate coming up so I just kind of blah, drop my stuff but I think that if I'm running every month that there will be a, a motivation and an incentive 
for me to uh, continue to run uh, throughout the month and maintain a, a fitness level. So that's that's kind of the main reason I'm doing the one per month. It's not like I'm a big you know goal or it's it's more of a practical goal than it is some kind of you know ethereal. A challenge type goal. It's it's a practical goal. It's to help me. It's to help motivate me. Uh, what else am I doing? I uh, just started a new book called Breath by Breath by I think his name's Larry Rosenberg. I don't have the book in front of me. So that book is about insight meditation. It was recommended to me by a man here in Nashville. Uh, about a year, a little bit over a year ago, um, I talked to this gentleman who I met through a uh, kind of email correspondence, and we talked for maybe an hour and a half to two hours about Buddhism. I wanted to learn a little bit more about Buddhism. Uh, I became very interested in it uh, around that time period, and I'm still very interested in it. And so that's why I started reading the book. Uh, a big part of Buddhism is meditation. And meditation is something I don't quite understand, although uh, I do think that I understand it better than I think I understand it. So <laughs> if that makes any sense. I think I understand it more on a subliminal level than I do on a cognitive level. Anyway, so I started reading that book, and it's it's kind of a user's guide, a manual for how to meditate. So, uh, just now started it, um, but I'm looking forward to uh, to reading some more about that. So, I want to integrate more running into my life. Uh, I want to start a, a daily meditation practice. Uh, I want to run daily, um, not. Maybe not every day running, but certainly five times a week at the very least, maybe six times a week. So I uh, want to do that, running, meditation. And I know this is like a New Year's resolution video, but it's totally not New Year's. <laughs> but it's the day before Thanksgiving, so I don't know, maybe that's got something to do with it. But anyway. Uh, that's kind of a plan, so I want to get started on that. And what else am I working on right now for next year? Uh, I want to continue down the minimalist path. As you can see, I still have not cleaned. I've cleaned up part of the mess behind me, uh, but there's still mess behind me. And I really want to get... Uh, I go through days. I have days. Um, because... Letting go of your stuff is not easy. You've, uh, especially when you're. I'm 35 now, and so I've lived roughly half my life, um, or I've lived all of my life and potentially half of my complete life. But I've lived all of my life in a consumerist culture, and I have bought into that consumerist culture up until probably the last. You know six years so and slowly over the last six years I've started at first it was kind of a subconscious thing uh, but slowly over the past six years I've developed this abhorrence for this consumerist culture almost I mean it's um, not something that I particularly enjoy so I, the uh, People in our culture, the uh, un the culture of the United States, we put way, way, way too much emphasis on stuff. Stuff is is an ends. It's not a means. It's not a tool. It's 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 like. It's a, it's a reason for living, and it, it shouldn't be. Stuff is not a reason for living. Especially if it's not essential. 
So there are thir certain things you do need. You need food. You need some kind of shelter. You need clothing. Um, but you don't need trinkets. You don't need collectibles. You don't all of this stuff. All of this stuff that we have um, that serves no no useful purpose really in our lives, other than to just distract us. It's it's it makes me tired. It's it makes me weary. So <laughs> I'm weary from the stuff in our lives. So anyway, back to the topic minimalism. I want to uh, decrease my attachment to things. Um, I'm getting to the point now where I really want to start just taking stuff, even if it I feel like I could sell it. Just take it. Just get rid of it. Just get rid of it. So next year, I really want to try to focus on that. I really want to pare down what I've got and. Uh, Get, get a much more minimalist um, footprint uh, possibly move I'd love to move into a smaller apartment uh, maybe even a, a efficiency apartment some you know and pay a little bit less rent uh, that would help me save money things like that so um, I'm gonna be working on that next year uh, kind of the fourth thing that I'm gonna be working on next year is and it sort of pertains to the minimalist thing is getting out of debt. And so to acquire all the junk that I've acquired in the past 35 years, I've accumulated debt. I've actually <sighs> accumulated debt, got rid of debt, accumulated more debt, got rid of debt. Um, and now I'm kind of in a, I'm in a pretty big hole right now. I've got about $4,000 in credit card debt, consumer debt. And I've got about ten thousand dollars in automobile debt. So, um, the plan is to work something out so that I can pay down this debt. Um, if I had been smart, I would not have gone on this trip to Vegas, <laughs> um, and I would have been able to significantly cut my uh, debt down, the consumer debt, the credit card debt. Um, but I'm not smart, so I'm going to Vegas. But after that, I'm really going to start looking at ways to uh, cut my expenses. Uh, I'm Right now I'm considering going without a cell phone, uh, significantly reducing my internet speed, you know, to get uh, a lower rate, um, canceling all my little extraneous expenses like Netflix and things like that. Um, I'm going to continue to try to sell some of my things. Uh, I'm seriously considering uh, buying a cheap used car and selling my current car that I owe ten thousand dollars on uh, I'll, I'll be upside down in that car but I, I think I can get a loan I'll, I should be able to get a loan from my bank um, to cover what I still owe on the car uh, once it sells and that would allow me to pay it off faster and once the car is paid off then I can pay down the other debt faster too because the car payment really eats into my uh, monthly budget, so uh, it's not a lot. It's two hundred and twenty dollars a month, but that's two hundred and twenty dollars a month that I can't spend anywhere else. So, if I can get a cheaper car uh, that's semi-reliable, that can get me back and forth to work, um, I'd be in a better position, I think, especially if I can get rid of my car and get a decent amount of money for it. So I'm working on that next year, and hopefully, I don't think that I'll get out of debt next year, but it's a possibility. Thing number five 
the final thing that I'm going to work on next year, I'm sure I'll work on a lot of other stuff, but the final big, big thing is I'd really like to find another job. I'm pretty dissatisfied with my current job. Uh, it's just not uh, compatible with my personality. I, I just have a hard time with it. Uh, I go and I do the job and I try to do the job to my best to the best of my ability uh, but I just don't think it's a job that I'm really cut out for. Um, so I want I want to try to find a new job something a little bit more I like to be hands-on producing things I like to do things and to make things so I want to find a job that also kind of fills a need and not my job right now the, what we do the company I, I'll just tell you I work for a company that does distribution for Starbucks to me Starbucks is a, a luxury item it's part of this whole consumer culture thing you know and it's really that aspect of it that's not the biggest thing that gets me down about the job but that's part of the things that gets me down about the job is it's so um, consumerist oriented so uh, I would like to kinda get away from that and do something that uh, produces a product or a service even that uh, fills a need uh, and that is necessary and beneficial and not necessarily just all about consumerism. Uh, I don't really know, I don't have, this is something, this is the reason I bring it up last is because that, it's not something I put a lot of thought into, um, but it's something that, that uh, I think that if I could get to that point in my life where I was doing something that I enjoy rather than something to just pay bills uh, that I would ha get a lot more life satisfaction so I just don't know what it is yet that's <laughs> I don't know what it is and so part of my journey this year will be discovering what this thing is what what makes me happy what makes me happy um, and so far, I can just tell you right now, so far, none of the things that I've done so far in my life as jobs have made me happy. So, um, I haven't hit on it yet, but I think I think I will eventually. I, I'll take that back. There are aspects of, of each of my jobs that have made me happy. And I can tell you one thing, that it's the simplest things that make me happy. It's when I, I used to work for Dell Computer. Um building computers I really enjoy building computers uh, when I work for the company I work for now picking orders uh, I enjoy doing that and it's it's really simple it's not mind crushing work you know I mean it's um, basically following instructions is all you're doing and <laughs> uh, it's physical uh, and um, not it's not mentally demanding uh, to a great extent. I mean, you do have to concentrate. You got to think about what you're doing and stuff like that. But those those simple jobs, I I get I derive a lot of pleasure from. So if I could find something like that that I could actually live off of, um, that'd be great. Um, but I, I'm not I'm not opposed to doing other types of jobs like office work or uh, things that do take some mental energy. Um, but it would have to be in the right environment, and so there's that. Anyway, so that's kind of five things I'm going to work on: running, meditating, uh, getting out of debt. 
working on my career, and it was one other thing. I can't remember what it was. Uh, pretty long video, but that's kind of my life in a nutshell thus far up to this point and going forward. So uh, hopefully I'll do some more of these vlogs in the future. And I guess I'll see you next time. Peace out. Bye-bye.